All right, so we're getting the highlights onto this uh, painting of gardenias, as you can see here. And so I've started putting on a mixture of Indian yellow, titanium white, and in some cases, yellow ochre on the tips of these leaves. So I get this brush to apply the highlight. And I'm just mixing as I go, making sure that this stays nice and thin, because as we know, thin paint goes on to thicker paint below it. So I'll start here, where the light's going to be the heaviest, and pull back. Okay. So one more. This is going to be in direct light, so I actually need a little bit stronger right there. So I'm going to add a touch of white. The brush is loaded with color. Start at the end. Drag it back. Okay. Now, I take the fan brush. Go out right to the edge. Pull down. And I pull and curve at the same time. And now I'll pull up and curve. Now, what I can do if I feel like it later, depends on how the flowers turn out, we'll see, is I can go back with the dark mixed with Galka gel and do the same thing but in reverse. I start down here and work my way out. But we'll see how it works and whether or not we need it. and put in some of those dark veins because as you can see when you start to put the dark colors right up against the light the light stands out that much better so what I'm doing now is I'm going back I put on that first coat of dark a little bit too lightly so I'm going back to the corners and in some of these little pockets right here and just adding a mix of Prussian blue uh, ivory black yellow ochre or um, cadmium yellow, pale, and in some cases even burnt umber just to give it, so down here I put in some burnt umber just to give it sort of a woodsy stem-like feel because you know, there are going to be some twigs and whatnot down in here. And you'll notice I'm going in sort of these choppy strokes like that so that when it dries, now when I get to the leaves here, I can go right up to the edge and leave a nice clean edge on the leaves, but the stuff in the back this dark stuff underneath is very very dense showing you know a healthy plant and that's what we want and so to keep that illusion alive on this canvas I try not to put it on too uniformly so if I make a little error like that I'm not gonna sweat it too much but down here in this corner just just get it on almost like throwing down a Pick, them, pick up sticks. I don't know if you play that when you're young, but you know you just drop them and start the game. This is something similar. I want it to look kind of like that. 
behind these foremost leaves. Okay. And what that does, if you watch this one right here, watch how it's about to pop right off of the canvas. See that? It's a lot better. And see right here, I can fill that in. Now, I may have put on a little bit too much liquid clear, but it'll be fine. And since this one's underneath, I'm going to very, very lightly pull this shadow out, like so. And that really makes this one resting on top, just dynamic and standing out. These leaves are a little too perfect right here, so I'm going to just pull this dark out some. So after this, we should be ready to get into the flowers proper. Now this part up here, I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter like it is. Maybe put a few twiggy looking formations like that, particularly around the leaves so they can jump off the uh, canvas at us, but I wanted to have some dynamism up there too. This is all going to be covered by flowers. Blossoms are going here and here. So I think we're in pretty good shape now. And I'll confess, you know, doing this so darkly in the back, for me, is extremely counterintuitive. And I gotta give credit to uh, Bill Alexander and his show, because he, he hammers this point home over and over and over again that light on light is nothing. Light on dark, on the other hand, just pops the way we want. And I don't think we realize, and I think this was his point, we don't realize how much shadow we actually see. And so you the painter and me the painter, we have to mimic that. We think we're seeing all these light colors, but the only reason we're seeing them in our day-to-day -day life is because of the fact that there's all this shadow, this contrast. In fact, we don't like being in washed out light. It's uncomfortable. And so, you, the artist, get to choose what pops and what goes into the background, but it's all important and it all has its place. So now, the last thing I'm gonna do on these leaves for now is I'm going to go ahead and just settle all the paint on it like this. Just gently pull everything together and soften it just a touch. Just barely grazing the leaf. I don't want to blend out everything that you've done. Just soften it a little bit. We want these to be in the background. We don't want them having a pride of place in this picture. We want the blossoms to have all the attention. It's very, very, very gentle. Very too much. The veins on these gardenia leaves are pretty thick. And I don't want to kill that. It's part of their character. That's good. See, and then when, you, you, when you're done, you leave it really really difficult to do we want it to be perfect we want it to look like a photograph and that's a temptation we have to overcome myself included when I say we I will fuss with a painting to death and then I end up ruining the magic that got me to paint in the first place I'm going to try and put one vein here, and if it doesn't work, I'm leaving this leaf. It's not working, so we have to leave it. I think we're ready for the flowers. 